Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Uh, we want to kick off this 2022 season with some very cool products that I've tried. Uh, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about them. So let's get started. So first off, we've got the new Head Boom Pro. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, and I thought the same thing, we've got an extreme, an instinct, a gravity, a speed, a radical, and a prestige. Do we really need another line from Head? Well, you can't really get enough of a good thing, and the Boom Pro is definitely that. At 98 square inches and a 310 gram weight, it kind of falls within that controlled player's frame category, at least at first glance. It's got a fairly thin beam, but when you look at the shape of the head, it's definitely not traditional. It's got a little bit more of a squared off open design at the top, which when stringing it for the first time, really showed me just how open the string pattern is especially near the top of that racket. Well, it doesn't feel quite as point and shoot as some of those traditional player's frames, as it does tend to feel a little bit erratic near the top, but it makes it extremely spin friendly for this string pattern in this head size of a racket. What does that make the boom? Well, it makes it powerful and spin friendly, but still very connected to the ball. Something that we don't have with every racket out there. With all that being said, who is the head boom for? Well, as I alluded to a little earlier, you really need spin to control the inherent power of this racket. So to me, the new generation of younger players with semi-Western grips and windshield wiper strokes will really get the most out of a racket like this. What did I think when I played with this racket? Well, because of its fairly soft flex and thin beam, it's definitely controlled and connected to the ball. But with its high swing weight and very open, erratic pattern, it's a powerful racket. So it, it lies somewhere in between a power racket and a control racket. Definitely worth a demo. And we've got them in store now and on the website at racketsandrunners.ca. So the head speed line has been around for about 15 years. And it's always been a line that I have kind of questioned. It's, it's almost got a crisis of identity, you could say. It's, it's thin, it's soft, and in this case, it's an 18 by 20 string pattern on the Speed Pro. Um, but it's also got a 100 square inch head size and a not too heavy weight, which makes it kind of fall somewhere in between a tweener and a more controlled racket. Um, because of that, it doesn't necessarily have the top end feel and performance of either of those aspects. It doesn't have the scalpel-like precision of a mid-size prestige, you could say. And it doesn't have the super powerful, very whippy, spin-friendly, tweener-esque feel. But you couple those two things in the speed and it almost makes a tweener of tweeners. With the 18 by 20 string pattern on this racket, it's one of the most spin friendly 1820s out there. You, you still feel like you can brush up on the ball and get a lot of RPMs and, and depth on your shot, but it still has that solid feel we've all come to know and love from 18 by 20s. This version of the speed, in particular, the Oxetic speed, with that technology, the Oxetic technology, is, in my opinion, the culmination of this line of rackets over the past 15 years. I know that sounds pretty intense, but it is, in my opinion, at least the best one. The Oxetic technology, compared to its predecessor, really feels like it grabs the ball and then launches it out after a split second of control. And it's just that, the speed, this version, is very controlled. It's almost as if it, it sucks it in and snaps it back out with a little bit of extra pop. Something I haven't always felt with this with the speed line. Who does that make the speed for? Well, it's again kind of hard to define who the speed is for. I don't think it's a racket that you can kind of say, oh, if you're a spin player, play with the speed. If you're a if you're a controlled hitter, play with the speed. But it's just that. It's a racket that does everything very well and maybe nothing perfectly, but it will hold its own from the baseline with any racket. It will feel solid and precise at the net 
and it'll rock its serves because of its hefty swing weight and somewhat high weight. So really, the speed is for the modern player kind of looking to accomplish everything on the court. In my personal opinion, this is the best speed we've ever had, and honestly leaps and bounds ahead of the previous one, which was already a very good racket and one that I considered switching to back then. I think this is one of those rackets you really need to demo before you try. The good news is it is available in store now for demo, so come on in and try it out. Ah, the Clash. A racket that really took the tennis world by storm when it was released in 2019. Uh, I'm holding the 98, but I'll be talking more about the 100 because I feel like that one more encompasses the company's goal behind the racket. The Clash 100 V1 was the first tweener style racket with a thick beam, open pattern, fairly lightweight to dramatically reduce the flex of the frame, which made it very comfortable um, and also gave it an element of a little bit more control than other tweeners out there. It was, a, again, extremely popular racket that outsold all its competitors for around two, three years. Uh, and now we have here the V2. So what's new on the V2? Well, one of the major gripes I had with the original Clash was its somewhat mushy feel. Usually when a racket flexes as much as the Clash does, it needs to have a thin beam uh, to kind of allow it to, to bend a little bit almost. The Clash has a very thick beam, which doesn't allow the flex to feel very traditional. They included technologies like Feel Flex and Stable Smart to kind of make the racket feel a little bit different to anything else we'd had before. It almost felt mushy and like it bottomed out when you were hitting really hard. After my first forehand, which is kind of my go-to stroke to, to determine whether I like a racket or not, I could instantly feel the difference with the new Clash 100. I had it strung up the exact same way as the old Clash, so it was kind of a perfect way of determining which one felt better. Because of its distinct flex features, the Clash will never feel traditional, but I felt significantly more connected to the ball with the V2 than I did the V1 and that feeling of bottoming out wasn't quite as present as on the previous version. Wilson has included a new technology on the Clash line called 45 Braid, and it's a kind of a way of laying up the graphite that's a bit new, attempting to make a racket more stable while keeping the static and swing weight down. I have to say, it worked. The, the Clash 100 is 295 grams, and has a very low inertia through the air, aka swing weight. That being said, I didn't feel like this racket got pushed around at all, which was a gripe I had with the old one. It felt solid on contact and stable for such a light racket, which to be honest is quite an amazing feat from the brand. Despite all the feel aspects of the Clash, it's still a 100 square inch 16 by 19 lightweight racket. So it's very spin friendly, it's very inherently powerful, and it's very easy to use. With all that being said, who is the Clash for? Well, the original Clash was labeled as a comfort racket, almost as a sort of medicine for people who had a history of injuries, tennis related injuries in the past. I think this Clash is still very much that comfort oriented frame, but it is also a more stable, a more feel oriented frame than it was in the past. All those players who like the old Clash will certainly like this one and maybe even prefer it. I just think the V2 will now open its doors to a slightly more advanced tennis player. Uh, those who take a bigger cut of the ball and want a more stable, solid feeling racket. This one is certainly more so that than the previous one. My personal thoughts on the Clash 100 V2 is that I, I really do like this racket. I don't see myself switching to a frame like this. It just feels a bit too different to what I'm personally used to. But if you want something comfortable, powerful, that still has that stable, controlled feel, the Clash 100 is the perfect racket for you. And I'm sure it will do just as well as its predecessor. While the Clash is still in its pre-sale phase, we do have it available for demo, so come in and try it out anytime. Polyester strings have become increasingly popular in the world of tennis, and for good reason. They allow players with the modern game to take a massive swing at the ball, feel the string snap back on itself, and explode with loads of spin and control. 
Issue with polyesters for a lot of the tennis population is that they're very stiff, dead, and can cause a lot of unfriendly vibrations throughout the arm, elbow, shoulder. Because of this, a lot of polyesters have not necessarily been very accessible to a lot of tennis players out there, making them feel like they need to go for a multi-filament, a synthetic gut, or even a hybrid of a polyester with a softer string. Recently, the tennis industry has decided to kind of tackle that issue by releasing softer and softer polys. And we really do have quite a variety nowadays that I think makes this type of string, the polyester string, far more accessible to far more players. RPM Soft is kind of Babylon's culmination of softer and softer polys through the years, starting with RPM Blast, then RPM Power, and now RPM Soft. And it really is a one-of-a-kind polyester that I think will open up this style of string to a lot more players. When I was stringing this, it was really apparent how soft and buttery this, this string was. It flexes almost like a synthetic gut. It almost feels like you took a sin gut, you took a poly, you melted them together and created this string. On court, I have to say, RPM Soft was incredibly soft, almost Singot and Multi-like. The string didn't quite have that snap and spin friendliness of other stiffer polyesters, but also didn't have that extreme power that you get out of a multi-filament or a synthetic gut. It certainly had that polyester controlled feel. Because of how elastic this string is, it also holds its tension incredibly well. Something a little bit more along the lines of those multi-filaments and sin guts. That'll make this string far more playable for a longer period of time. On court, when I played with this string, I really felt like it fell somewhere in the middle between a synthetic gut a multi-filament and those polyesters. So who is this string for? While I, I don't think those players who have played with traditional polyesters will necessarily love the feel of RPM Soft, I think those who have played with multis, singuts, and even hybrids who want to foray into the world of polys will transition seamlessly with this string. It has all those positive qualities of those softer strings where it's fairly comfortable. It's quite powerful, the feel and touch is great, but it also has that far more controlled, spin friendly, and even somewhat deader feel of a polyester. It will allow those players caught somewhere between softer multi-filaments and stiffer polyesters, a string that really does it all. In my personal experience, this string was fantastic. I am a polyester user, but I really could appreciate the softness, the comfort of this string that still maintained some of those top end qualities of a polyester string. It's a string that I'm sure will do very well and a string that really opens up the world of polyesters to comfort, feel, touch, and that transition period that I think this string will be perfect for. It's available now. Come string up your racket with it, give it a shot, see what you think. When the Vapor 10 went out of stock, the whole Nike tennis community kind of fell on hard times. Um, the React Vapor NXT certainly didn't have the step in comfort of that shoe. And while the uh, Vapor Pro was fine, it still didn't have that Vapor, traditional Vapor feel that we all have come to know and love. All that might be changing with the release of the Nike Zoom Court NXT. As soon as I put my foot into the shoe, I was reminded of that vapor-like comfort where it's a little bit wider at the toe, but narrower at the heel, and you really feel like the shoe is made to flex with the whole shape of the foot. It also has that really nice cinching lacing system that the old vapors had, where you really feel like the middle and top of your foot is being grabbed by the laces and really hugged and it gives that really snug locked in feel. My one sort of gripe with this shoe is that the heel area doesn't feel quite as locked in as I would sometimes like from a shoe but while I certainly felt it in store it was actually something that went away on the court and I didn't really think of. 
The upper of the shoe is extremely flexible, again, kind of in line with those vapors of old. It really kind of wraps to your foot and doesn't feel constrictive in any way. The grip on the outsole is also very good. Now, it doesn't have that slippery, slidey feel like I've had with certain Nike shoes in the past and something that I tend to like, but it does have a more solid, grippy feel where you really feel like you take a big cut on the court and the shoe's not gonna give out on you. Because of how flexible this upper is, and you can see that it's pretty much a bare mesh with a little bit of rubber protecting it, it's not gonna be the most durable shoe out there, unfortunately, but that's a sacrifice that many tennis players are willing to make for the comfort levels a shoe like this gives. You can't have it both ways all the time. Uh, when you have such a flexible mesh, generally to get that nice comfortable feel, you're going to have to sacrifice durability. This shoe won't be terrible for durability, it's not gonna die after two or three hits, but it certainly doesn't have the same kind of durability as the Nike Zoom NXT or the Cage. Now you might be looking at this shoe and thinking, why is there a massive hole in the middle of it? And I had the same question the first time I saw it. Basically what they have done with this hole is to put a hole in there to save on weight without sacrificing performance. And to be honest, nothing was noticeable on court. So big win from Nike. So who exactly is this shoe for? Well, much like the older vapors, say the generation 10 and previous, this shoe is for those people wanting a really natural feel and a shoe that allows you to move around the court, feel fast, um, without feeling like there's much shoe bogging you down. When I was playing with this shoe, I honestly, at some points, completely forgot that I was doing a review, which is a sensation I really like from the shoe. I like almost feeling like there's nothing on my foot, but that the support of a tennis shoe is still there, that I can just go out, play my game, and the shoe will perform perfectly, not do anything extra, and just make me forget about the shoe. That's what this shoe does. The Nike Zoom Court NXT is available online and in store.